welcome to Mrs E English Skills. I'm Mrs E and today we're looking at how to write an article. What is an article? Well it's a piece of writing that's usually intended to be published either in a newspaper or a magazine or a journal even. Online as well. Generally, it's written for a wide audience, and that just means that it's accessible to all. So a wide variety of different people will be able to read it. So we need to ensure when we're writing an article that we've used appropriate language so it can be understood by all. It may include amusing stories, reported speech and descriptions. It's there really to entertain. So we got to make sure we use a wide variety of language devices within that. It can be formal or informal or semi-formal and that's just depending on the target audience. So we need to make sure we adapt the language to suit that target. And generally it'll give opinions as well as facts. If you've watched my video on fact, opinion and bias, you'll know that Writers often mix the two in order to persuade the reader. Check this out if you've not watched it already. So what's the purpose of an article? Well, an article can have a variety of purposes. It can describe an event, place, experience or even a person. It can present an argument or persuade the reader in some way. Or it could just provide information and offer advice. To find out more about Purpose of Text, check out my video, have a look at my channel and subscribe for more videos like this. Let's talk about format. What is the format of an article? Remember format means how we lay it out on the page. So we're thinking more along the lines of organisational features and structure. If you'd like to have a go at guessing the format, just pause the video here before I reveal the answers. So let's look at the format then. The first thing we need is a bold heading. This is supposed to draw the reader in, so we need to be clever when we're thinking of something catchy. We could also put a subheading underneath that gives us a little bit more information and the date of publication as well as the author. In terms of the functional skills exam, the writing exam, a subheading and date and author is not required, as in you wouldn't lose marks if you didn't use them. But this is something that an article generally does have. Then as normal, with most pieces of writing, we would have the first paragraph being our intro introduction. So this is telling the reader what the rest of the article is going to be about. And as this is for a wide audience, we have to think of this in different terms to an email and a letter. So we'll look in this video at maybe different ways we can start our introduction. The middle section is the main body, and the main body is your points in different paragraphs. So what points do you want to make? And in an article, we want to make these points informative but also engaging so we want to use a variety of language devices throughout to keep your reader hooked and then finally we have the conclusion and the conclusion as you know is where you sum up the main ideas of the article let's think about the heading article headlines are designed to attract the reader's attention so how can we make ours more noticeable what we need to do is think about word choice. Try to use more dramatic or emotional words such as disaster, battle, wrath, spectacle, clash. These will make the situation seem more dramatised and more enticing for us to read. You could also make use of language devices such as alliteration, terrifying tornado tomorrow, a rhetorical question. Had enough of bad news? Or repetition? Money, money, money. You can find out more about language devices in one of my videos on my channel, 
and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any videos that will help you with whatever course or qualification that you're studying. Once you've got a title and you've hooked your reader, we need to think about how to keep them engaged through the introduction, so our first paragraph of our article. We need to remember we're writing for a wide audience, so we need to capture and hold their interest from the start. Again, we can make use of language techniques or devices, such as rhetorical question. Want to know how to get more out of your relationships? Or we could use facts or statistics to entice our readers. 80% of us are not getting enough out of our relationships. Possibly we could use direct address and this is something that I would advise you use throughout the article because it creates that relationship with the reader. We are living in a world without sufficient love. You'll notice that all three of my examples have got direct address in there and this is quite important. When you are writing an article you are t trying to get the reader on side so they trust that what you've got to say is important or they should take it on board. In order to do that they need to feel comfortable with you and they need to have that level of confidence in what you're saying and direct address is a fantastic tool for that. So you have your reader hooked from your heading and your introduction but how can we keep them engaged throughout the main body of your article? First thing is to use the right tone. Tone is the attitude presented to the reader. Everything we say or write has a tone, whether it's a cheerful tone, a friendly tone, an angry tone, a somber tone. Let's look at some examples. If we were to say, why did you do that? This seems like a simple question. But if we were to say, why the hell did you do that? The added words completely change the tone and this suggests the writer is not happy. So a lot of getting the right tone is to do with word choice. So think about the words that you choose and do they follow the tone that you want to display? Of course, if you are writing a persuasive argument in your article, you'll want maybe to get some negative tones in order to make your reader feel outraged at a topic. So they would support you when you are saying that you are outraged in a topic. So there is a balance there. So think about what tone you want to present, what attitude you want to present and choose your words accordingly. There are lots of ways that you can keep your reader engaged in your topic. Obviously I can't talk about them all in this short video so I'll just put a few out there for you to use. Direct address, as I've said, it creates a rapport with your readers, and rapport just means a good relationship. So, some examples, I am sure you will agree. Do you think that? We are all in this together. When I say the word you, it sounds like I'm talking directly to you as a reader, so I'm making you become involved in my text. And words like we, us, our, makes it seem like I'm just like you. I'm the same person, so you can trust in what I'm saying. Humour is an effective tool as well, but obviously only when appropriate. Because people like to be amused, they like to be entertained, and they like to laugh. So you can use sarcasm, irony or wit, and you can find out more about them in another video, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Anecdotes or personal experience, little stories that you can tell the reader to make you seem like a real person and not just an information sheet. So I remember once when. This can also be quite emotive and create that emotional connection between you and your reader. And finally, use of facts and statistics. And we use these as evidence to support our opinions. We want the reader to believe in what we're saying particularly if we're trying to convince them or persuade them in some way, which most articles will do. But don't bombard them, don't use too many, as this may reduce engagement. We want to keep that conversational flow going. Finally, we need to think about ending the article. 
it's not as simple as uh, thank you for taking the time to read kind regards or many thanks. We have to be creative in the way we end it because we want the reader to be satisfied and we want them to carry on thinking about the article long after they finish reading it. So your concluding paragraph should summarise your article, summarise your main ideas, but what should your final sentence be? You could give a final overall opinion. For example, it is for all of these reasons that I personally believe. By this point in the article, your reader should be convinced by everything you've put forward. And this type of ending is quite useful in a persuasive argument. So they've got more chance of agreeing with your final overall opinion as you've built them up throughout the article. You could offer recommendations or advice. If I were you, I'd give it a miss. This is useful if you're writing an article about an event or a place to travel. <coughs> or reviews, which we'll look at in more detail in another video. Or you could suggest further reading or investigation. And this is really good if you can't think of a way to end the article, because this is something really easy to do. Just think of a website or a meeting date. So to find out more, visit www.suchandsuch.com. Let's look at a sample question. Remember, this is the Functional Skills Level 1 Writing Exam. So, like always, you will get some information. And this says, your local library is closing down. You visit the library often for social and educational reasons. The library has been part of the community for over 80 years. You have been told by the council that if you gain enough support, they will reconsider the closure. And the task? Write an article for the local free paper to persuade others to oppose this closure. And oppose just means go against this closure. In your article you should describe the history of the library, explain why you oppose the closure, explain the effects of the closure on the local community. And once again you should aim to write about 150 to 200 words. I would suggest you make a plan before you start writing your answer. This ensures you tick everything on the brief and also allows you to know where you're going before you start writing so you don't ramble or go off on a tangent. So we have our brief. We need to describe the history of the library. We need to explain why we oppose the closure and we also need to explain the effects of the closure on the local community. The first thing we need is a title, and remember, think of those dramatic or emotive words. Tragic loss in our community, for example. It will hook your reader in and make them want to read more. Paragraph one needs to be the introduction. It needs to tell the reader why we're writing and explain the situation to the reader and indicate our view. So the situation is the library's closing, but we could be creative in the way we begin this topic. Could we use a rhetorical question, have you heard the devastating news, and then go on to say about the library closing? This will indicate your view that it's a terrible loss for the community. Then we move on to our main body. So this is where we look at the bullet points given in the brief. So paragraph two would possibly describe the history of the library. Now when we start to expand these bullet points we need to make sure we describe in detail or evidence them and the evidence you can use to support are facts which obviously you're making up at the on the spot in the exam but present them as facts so maybe statistics such as 65 percent of the community use the library or attend the library on a regular basis you can also use quotes from other members of the community talking about the history and, and how it's affected their lives Paragraph two, second bullet point, we can explain why you oppose the closure. So this is really good to use personal experience or anecdotes. So talk about your use of the library and how you've benefited from it. And think about the language devices, the emotive language that you can use to make people feel truly devastated that you won't be able to do this anymore. 
Then the third bullet point, explain the effects of the closure on the local community. And here again, you can use facts. So maybe you can think of a case study. And a case study is just a real event or a, a real story. So maybe there was another community whose local library closed. And now there's 50% more cases of mental health issues, for example. So this will allow you to provide not just the fact that you are personally attached to the library, but the fact that the whole community are benefiting from the library. So if it were to close, it's going to have a detrimental effect on the community. Now you've fulfilled the brief, but don't forget you need to conclude your article. So paragraph five is your conclusion, where you can sum up the main points that you've discussed, add a final opinion, or suggest further reading or investigation. So you can give a website or a phone number that could be called. Uh, but for this, a good idea might be to suggest the date and time of a meeting that's taken place in order to get this opposition together to present to the council. Then throughout the whole article, make sure you use language devices or techniques throughout. So things like direct address, rhetorical question. I've put in here, you know, statistics, but there's lots of things that you can use. Description, you know, um, descriptive verbs, adjectives, adverbs, that sort of thing to keep your reader engaged and allow them to enjoy the article as well as become emotionally connected to it and persuaded into stopping this terrible thing from happening. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to hit subscribe. It really helps the channel out and it allows me to make more and more videos to help people with their English skills. Like this video if you liked it and share with people who may find it useful. And don't forget to check out my other videos to keep on improving your English. I'm Mrs E and I'll see you soon.